So from the beginning, yeah? Yep. Okay. Hey, I'm Mel. And I'm Andres, and you're listening to Mix <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was. I thought I was the beginning. <laughs> I forgot. You were gonna say hi, Mel. <laughs> <laughs> the pandemic we were taking classes on zoom and then Andres and I decided to practice what we were learning on our dance classes um, in a, the parking lot um, at the end of that we would sit down at the parking lot and just talk about what was happening in the world uh, specifically related to uh, social justice and racial injustice you know this was happening during the the murder of George Floyd and so that caused a lot of distress yeah. for us and so we started thinking about the spaces that we spend a lot of time in and how we experience racism um, and how we can create a more anti-racist space. Andres thought, well, why don't we uh, talk about this more formally instead of just to ourselves and yeah. introduce the idea of a podcast. And so, you know, naturally being researchers, we thought, um, you know, the best way that we can gather information about what's happening in our community is by talking to black uh, dancers in our community. As we spoke to them and, and learned about their experiences, we realized that there's a lot more to unpack. In the overarching kind of collection of Afro-Latin rhythms, if you dig deep enough, it kind of all goes back to the fact that there was, you know, this horrible thing called the transatlantic slave trade. The people who came here enslaved kind of not only you know brought their uh, ability to work but also their culture even though it was kind of for the most part tried to be broken by those who enslaved them that's part of the story that we tell uh, but it's not the whole story right yeah. and, and the whole story really includes uh, using culture using dance and music um, to be resilient the mixtape podcast is a platform that we use to center black voices um, and to understand the black roots and culture of Afro-Latin dances by taking an anti-racist approach. When I'm dancing, it is very much an escape. So I'm not thinking about anything but dance. It's like a reset. You go dancing and it's not necessarily an escape in the sense that you're not like, forget all of that. It's more like, okay, let me, put a blank slate in my head so that I can go back later on and not having all this kind of mess in the head as well. As we dig deeper into the meanings of, of songs and rhythms, we start interacting with the music differently. Now I dance and listen to this music, I think with a little bit more joy and a little bit more connection. Being able to uh, listen to stories and hear stories um, from that framework of understanding what's happening racially and economically, I think really paints a, a complete picture of how we understand rhythms. I think for uh, people of color, uh, the black people in particular who partake in the dance scene, I think they are beginning to feel heard. Uh, their side of the story is being told through our podcast. 